So today I'm going to go over inquiry and um, show the resources that are available. So this presentation is on inquiry and this is how you would possibly teach students about inquiry. So the first thing is that we want to build the why for students and we really want to empower them to be critical thinkers and we want to teach them these inquiry based strategies. So um, let's take a look at what critical thinking really is. So it aligns with the I in Wicker and the inquiry process. So we want skilled questioning. We want you know to allow students to participate in Socratic seminars and philosophical chairs where they're really thinking and going ahead and explaining that thinking and deciding uh, and making re revising those decisions and really getting in depth with concepts. So another way to promote critical thinking uh, during asynchronous work could be quick writes. Uh, during synchronous work, we could have class discussions where students use the chat or unmute to participate. And then critical thinking activities that could be assigned either synchronous, synchronously or asynchronously. We want students to generate and write their own questions. It takes much more thought to write a question than it does to answer a question. And we want them to be open, open ended, open minded activities where students can grow. So uh, that's really important. So let's look at the inquiry process and what it is. So first it starts off with something that a student wonders, what they notice, what they have questions about. They might even state a problem. And then they investigate. And then they plan, they read, they research, they have some field work, they might do an interview. They record some data and they start looking at the data and they make observations and they discover, they examine, they interpret. And then they kind of make a conclusion where they think logically, they discuss, they analyze, they synthesize information, and then they try a, an experiment to prove this thinking or disprove. And then they reflect on the experiment, on the model, the ideas, or um, they could, if they want to, they can try again and repeat the process before they reflect and come to some type of conclusions. And then they go ahead, and this is a cyclical process because they continue to refine and to better understand. So it, it goes along with, uh, with science, but it also just goes along with life and how we as uh, learning beings identify life and problems and how we tend to problem solve. This is a video from YouTube and it's uh, Costa's Levels of Thinking and Questioning. So you could definitely show this to your class. It is a long video. I think it's like 13 minutes. I would definitely not show all of it. You could assign it through Google Classroom and students could watch this independently and take notes. So there's multiple ways that you can uh, choose to teach and uh, you know divide the sections of this presentation to maximize your time with students. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. And um, the next one is the handout from Avid Center. And it just shows uh, the lots. So we ask a lot of level one question and the hots, which is higher order questions. So we really want to do these higher order questions and thinking when we're uh, in a tutorial, when we're doing Socratic seminars, philosophical chairs. We really want to get to that in-depth thinking. So this is one way to do that and then um, uh, apply the thinking to something new. So the kind of the way I think about this is like um, self to text and then uh, text to text and then text to real world. So that's another way to think about that. So when we have this picture, this was in the video, we want students to go ahead and generate a level one, level two and level three question in regards to the, to the photo. So the photo has, uh, it's the, the scales of justice, and it has a gavel in one scale and the gun in the other. And then we want them to analyze what this could mean, and we'd like them to write a level one question, and then take that level one question and turn it to a level two question, and then turn that level two question into a level three question. So again, this is them practicing. You could also partner students up or put them in a breakout room if that's allowed, and going ahead and having them change each other's level one question. So if I was number one, then I would, number two person would change my level one question to a level two question. And I would change number four's question from a level one question to a level two question. And we would just rotate through our group. 
So that's another process that we could do if we were in a breakout room or doing this on a Google slide or on a Jamboard or something. And so going to the next photo is now, again, just another way for students to either change their own question or to change uh, a group member's question from a level one to a level two to a level three. So we're just giving them some more practice. And then the very last part of this are, uh, these are the vocabulary words that COSA really um, categorizes as a level one, level two, or level three verb. So that's uh, where this comes from. And again, even though I'm writing a level one question and it says to define um, something, I could easily Google that and I could find it in Google and then I could uh, just copy it. And so, yeah, that would be a level one. But if I'm defining in my own terms using prior knowledge and comparing and contrasting and I define something, so maybe that's no longer a level one, it may be a level two. So sticking to these, it really depends on how we gather our information, what critical thinking I'm um, using in order to, to do the process, but it doesn't necessarily mean that every time I define something, it's a level one. It's really a level one if I'm copying from a text or if little thought is, uh, is used, but if I'm defining it in my own words and using various resources and analyzing and comparing and contrasting, I might be completing a level two thinking in order to do a level one task. So what is really important is for students to understand these levels of questions and for them to understand the, um, the required output to achieve the goal. So sometimes when we have state testing, students go ahead and they try really hard and they're taking up all their time and they're becoming exhausted because they have level one questions, but they're providing a level three uh, DOK. So just understanding that we have to have students critically analyze the task, determine what is necessary from them in order to achieve the task so that they don't um, over over analyze and put out so much effort that when it comes to a level three question, they're putting out a level one DOK. So that is really important. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.